The postman's just been and he's dropped this through my door. A friend of mine has sent me this knife and he wants me to sharpen it. It is sharp but he's just had a knife off me and realised how sharp a knife can actually be. And this is a knife made by Roger Harrington of Bison Bushcraft fame. I think it's a few years old, seen a bit of wear, plenty of use. and. I'm going to sharpen it and I'm going to sharpen it on DMT stones because they are my preferred hand sharpening method and then I'm going to finish it off on micro mesh drops. First thing I'm going to do though, can you see that little lump there? I'm going to take that off with a Dremel because if I leave that on I can't get nice and tight to the plunge cut and it basically knocks my sharpening out and it only gets sharp from there onwards and not close to the handle where it's meant to be. Gone. So I'm going to start off on the course and I've got an eraser block here and this is a little tip I picked up in a knife shop in Las Vegas many years ago to clean the stone. Done. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I use water by the way, I'm going to strop this to see how flat that bevel actually is. Now I can see I've ground away a little bit by there and a bit by there. So this bevel isn't flat. So I've got to do a lot of work. I have got an extra coarse stone. The only thing is it's smaller and I can't get tight into there by using it. So unfortunately I've got to use this one first. Can you hear that wind? Right, well you can see now it's starting to flatten. It shouldn't take too long so I'm going to repeat that quite a few times until that grind is an even shine. We're almost there. I've got one little spot there you probably won't be able to see it a little shiny spot I've just got to take that off and both sides are flat. Done. That's the hard work. It's flat. And that took me 25 minutes and years ago when I used to sharpen on 
just what the stones that would have taken twice that well I know that's pretty flat it doesn't look perfect but it's as, it's as good as it's going to get now I'm going to switch sides now I'm going to put the, the fine the red And now I'm going to do it all over again, but at least it won't take as long. I just want to get now them scratches out and find the scratches in. Oh, and I need a new cloth. So that's 10 minutes on the fine stone and I've almost got a perfect burr and that's what I'm aiming for is a perfect burr just a tiny one that I can see in the sunlight and then I know give me some half my head and then I know I can go on to the extra fine well I don't know if you can see this but I can it's just that amount of tip I haven't got a burr you should be able to see it there a little bit more work and I'm switching stones to get the burr though you've got to favor one side so the side you're strongest on you sharpen that side so I want I can see the burr here so I'm going to sharpen on that side because my pull stroke stronger than my push stroke but I still start the sharp although I only want that bit sharpened hell I nearly cut myself although I nearly only want that bit sharpened I still start on the biggest flat bit to maintain my angle no good if you you want that burr because you know it's flat and there's no point then switching and sharpening the other side because you'll just knock it off and you can't see it always remember as well when you're doing the tip lift your elbow or you will not sharpen the tip And now I've got an even burr. Now I haven't got a big stone for the fine. I've got a smaller one. And this gadget has got a bit of a thing in it. So I can place it in and it doesn't move too bad. Let's give it a wipe. And I'm going to leave this in the sun now to dry. Yes, we'll have a bit of sun. It's coming and going. because it will rust so here's a groove get into the groove bit of madonna for you five minutes on this and then we'll go on to the straps I press quite lightly when I'm using this one so I can get more of an uh, even finish Well, that's enough on there. Now, if I put this on a polishing wheel or on a strop with paste, this will be more than sharp enough to use. But I want to put in more or less a mirror polish on it. So I'm going to use the micro mesh strops now. Now, some of the micro mesh strops are probably a coarser grit than that. But it doesn't matter because I want it flat and I want it shiny. And if it means going over a grit again, 
so be it. I'm going to clean this stone now. And if you don't know what micro mesh are, well, basically a very high quality wet and dry paper on a cloth back. And there's more grit per inch or per centimetre than in cheap paper abrasives. And they last a lot longer and you can wash them. They're this size basically because of the way I cut them to get the most out of them. And each one of these I've labelled from rough to super smooth. And we're going to start off on a 1500. But that 1500 is actually rougher than a Waterstone 1500 would be. I put my regular strop in the vise. So basically I'm going to do that now for the next 10 minutes with these. Going from rough to super smooth. Now what's good about finishing off on micro mesh strops rather than finishing off on a water stone if you want to get in there and clean that edge up it's a damn sight easier doing it on a strop than doing it on a stone did I say 10 minutes? 20 minutes last thing Stacky blue paste on the shop. Now, I could use my polishing wheel for this, but I'd rather keep the edge flat. So I'm going to take an old Stanley blade, take the gunk off. I put quite a bit of pressure down doing this. Now some guys say 60 strops or 50 strops aside. Nah, there's no need for that, that's too much. As soon as it's mirror sharp, mirror polished, quit. What's the point? You're just going over it for no reason at all. And when it starts sliding, that's the time to either stop or scrape it and reapply polish. Hello. Well, thanks for watching. I'm sure some of you older viewers have watched me sharpening a knife before, but that's my preferred way of getting a lovely flat mirrored polish. And I used to use water stones, but as soon as I found the DMTs, I switched because it's so much quicker and they do not dish, they stay flat. Apparently they don't wear out, everything wears out in the end. And I've had them big stones, the big 10 inch flat one, since I went to Las Vegas, which was about 12 years ago. And the smaller stone... I've actually got a red one, a fine one as well, and I must have had them for 20 years. So they do last. 
granted I don't sharpen knives from scratch as much as I used to because I make them and the finished edge on when I've made is from the machine and that's more than sharp enough but it's not as pretty as that but when you consider that that took me an hour and a quarter if I was to do that to every knife I'd have to put an extra £30 on every knife so that's not going to happen so you don't want to pay that and I don't particularly want to spend an hour and a quarter sharpening every knife I'm sure there's people who can do it quicker but I think uh, that's pretty much proof that that's a good job and a job well done. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Done this for a friend. I don't do it often, but if work dries up, then I'd probably do it for you for £30 plus return postage. But at the moment, I haven't got the time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.